Hi guys, my name's Doug. Welcome to my Massey Garage. In this week's mess, we're going to be mounting a chart plotter on a 2021 Skidoo Expedition LE. A friend of mine just got a brand shiny new snow machine and we need to mount chart plotter to it. Here we have a chart plotter mount that I did up last year on an Expedition Sport 2020 model. It fits fairly nicely in beside the handlebar brackets. On this particular model we probably could have come off of the handlebar bolts just like we did on the Bearcat that we did a few weeks ago. The LE is a little bit more complicated. As you can see you got a mountain strap here and the mountain strap has a nice little rib that comes out in the middle that makes it more difficult to catch these four bolts. Also, because the mountain strap comes out, there's not really enough room to put the mirror mounting brackets on the flat. Uh, looking at it a little bit, I'm thinking we're gonna mount the mirror mounting brackets here on these diagonal uh, riser pieces. They're gonna come out, and of course, they're gonna be sitting at an angle. The advantage that I see to having them on an angle is that uh, we'll be able to put a bend in the bracket and bends make things a little bit stiffer. So hopefully the GPS when it's sitting here will have a little bit more rigidity to it than we've had in the past. So the first stage to designing the bracket is we're going to mount the two mirror mounting brackets onto the handlebar right here and right here and we'll take some careful measurements and see if we can figure out the best way to design this bracket. This is the bracket we have here. It's just uh, machine aluminum, probably originally cast, and held together with some Phillips screws. Okay, I don't want to get too carried away tightening that down. Once we get the second one on here, we'll uh, kind of sort of line them up so that they're parallel, or parallel isn't a good term, but at least sitting at the same angle. Laying this out flat like I have the other ones, the distance between the two bolt holes here uh, generally doesn't change a whole lot. But the problem we're going to run into is when we bend this bracket, the bolt holes are likely going to come a little closer together. So uh, I've tried putting these, you know, as approximately close to the center of that riser angle as I can, and that will allow us to move them up or down slightly, tilt it, that kind of thing. So that we can come up with uh, the appropriate bolt spacing. I'll get it as close as I can with the measurements that I'm going to take here, but chances are it is going to require a little bit more adjustment. Fine tuning would be a good term for it when we put it together. And I'm going to bend the uh, this nice flexible stainless steel ruler down a little bit. It's going to kind of give us the, uh, the distance between with a bit of the bow in it that we're going to need. It shows 190 millimeters between the bolt holes. So we're going to start off on the screen here, put the bolt holes and we'll call it 190 millimeters. Again, all of my layout tools are in metric. I apologize to those that are metrically challenged. And I guess we can throw that upright in the picture. So this is the bracket that we used in the previous video to lay out the, uh, the Bearcat bracket. It was originally designed to work with this, as you can see, um, but this won't work. What we do need is to figure out a way to make this mount approximately like that. So I need to know the distance between the center of these bolt holes and the front of where we want this. So looking at the ruler, about 100 millimeters should work. So we've got 100 millimeters from the center of the mount bolt holes forward to the front edge of the bracket. When I go to lay the bracket out, I will we'll use this and that'll give us a template. The rest of the information I should be able to get from the shape of the bracket. 
and as for the angle, I think we'll probably end up, I might put a little bit of a pre-bend on those, but uh, we'll end up massaging them in place. Anyways, that's what's involved in laying it out, and the next step is we'll turn my notes from here into something that uh, we can put on a piece of paper and then put on a piece of aluminum. On to the next step. Okay, so here we are, my back porch workshop, not the messy garage, and we're going to start out by laying this bracket out on a piece of paper. Similar to the last time we did this, start with a line down the middle of the page, go across the bottom, and that's where we start from. We want to come up about 15 millimeters from our baseline and that's where we're going to put the two holes. The reason I'm going to do that is I want this baseline to be the edge of the part and we need to have adequate edge distance. So 10 millimeters would be okay but the problem with that is that we're going to put an 8 millimeter bolt hole in there so that would chew up 4 millimeters of the uh, hole leaving us only with six. So that's why we're gonna go with a 15 mil edge. And we wanna be 190 millimeters across. So that is 95. So we'll put the line at 100, come over to 195. And we're at 100, so we come over to five. Those will be our, yes, I know those aren't very good circles, but it gives us the idea what we're looking at. Now, from the center of this hole to the front edge, I want it to be 100 millimeters. And that should be the front of our mounting bracket. Kind of something like that. Of course, we've got to measure the center point, etc. I think that'll give us enough distance from the mountain strap to the screen of the GPS and also the GPS should be up probably at top of it sits up about like that and that will give us uh, enough room to be able to see the screen around the strap. Anyways let's get this marked. So what I'm going to do here we can see the center of these screw holes. Put those a little closer. So you can see the center of these screw holes and line up marks equidistant on either side and make those even numbers. So we've got 20 to 90, that's give or take 70 millimeters. So we come up to 55, which would be 35 halfway. There's a mark. And you'll notice that it's not lined up with either one of those notches, which is kind of what I was expecting. Now we'll repeat down here. We lined up on what's the, going to become our bracket. Trace it out. There we go, we've got the corner traced. I'm going to come across here with the line just so that we have a reference. I don't plan on cutting anything across there. There is the outline of our bracket. Now we need to add another 15 millimeters and 15 millimeters all the way around. Actually, the top of this cap is pretty well 30 millimeters, so we'll just center it. Now we could bring this kind of straight over and put another radius there, but that leaves kind of two tabs that stick out like this. That um, would make bending these up to match the angle of the handlebars very easy, but I don't think that it would add a lot of strength to the uh, to the bracket and you would end up with a lot of shaking as you go down the down the lake. So I think I'm gonna bring this up, kind of put a nice filleted corner in here. Something that's relatively easy to cut because I plan on doing this this on the bandsaw just like the last one that we did. Give or take 90, 
draw a line at 50. Over here, do the same thing. And there we go, we've got a nice bracket. The holes that will actually attach this mount to the bracket that we're manufacturing, we'll drill those later using the transfer punches and a hand drill. No sense getting too carried away marking them out when uh, we can use the piece as our template. Anyways, on to the garage. We'll find a piece of scrap aluminum and start cutting this out. Okay, here we are at the vise. Got our files. Remember that the one rule of filing is that files really only cut, normal files at least, only cut in one direction. So we need to try and remember to push rather than pull. Pulling doesn't really do much. Okay, there's a piece all filed up. Sharp edges peeled off. Now we need to drill the holes to mount to the handlebars and bend these tabs up a little bit and also drill the holes to mount the GPS unit to the plate. Here's our aluminum mounting bracket and our template laid up on top of it. Put the tip of the center punch on the crosshairs for the circle. Make sure the rest of it is reasonably well lined up. Put my hand on it and those look reasonably good. Now I'll get a drill set up and drill those holes out. So we've got the holes drilled that will eventually attach to these brackets, unfortunately. Silly me. The bolts that I got, I got the fine thread and in 10 millimeters there's three threads available. And unfortunately these appear to be the medium thread. That's not going to work. But we can still continue to drill holes to mount the GPS. This is a duplicating punch. Focus. You'll notice that it is a straight shaft. Comes down to a sharp point. This is a constant diameter as compared to this center punch, which is tapered and then a point on it. The advantage to this is they come in different sizes and you match the one closest to your hole. When you put this down into the hole, it will maintain the center. We get that relatively straight. Drop that down into the hole. There's a little bit of slack, but not too bad. And I'm going to whack with the hammer. So here we are. We've got all the holes drilled. But you can see this kind of a... I think you can see it's kind of a sharp edge around that hole. We don't really want sharp edges. So we take a uh, deburring tool. And that just kind of scrapes the sharp edge off. Now when you're deburring holes like this, you want to be careful not to uh, auger the hole out too much. Especially if you're doing it on thinner aluminum. Because this tool is capable of opening the diameter of the hole up. If you're not careful. And there we go. A few little scratches, we'll take some scotch bright, just give this a quick once over, make it look all nice and uniform. And then we just have to bend the ears up a little bit, and then we're ready to mount to the snow machine. So here we are a couple of weeks later. We've actually got the GPS mounted to the handlebars here. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we got some restrictions going on and we couldn't get to the store to pick up ring terminals. So we haven't got the power hooked up. But we've got it all run. Let me show you what we did here. We got the bracket with the 10 millimeter, uh, I think 1.25 pitch bolts holding the uh, bracket that I made to the mirror mount. We've got the mounting bracket for the GPS is attached there. Good and solid. Um, preference, I would have liked to have had a little bit of a notch here to cut these bolts just a little more, but this works. 
the wiring runs down through down through the notch here. I've got a tie wrap to the side of the steering pedestal. And I don't know how well this is going to show up. Unfortunately, I did a really good explanation about how I connected this all up to the snow machine. And my nice gyro stabilized camera wanted to look anywhere other than where I wanted to show you guys what to do. So I'm going to be left doing an explanation. Immediately in front of the gas tank on the Expedition LE is the starter solenoid. On the back side of the starter solenoid is a red cap. That red cap is covering a direct link to the battery. That's a good place to pick up your power. Definitely put an inline fuse. You want to protect the circuit with a fuse and run that up to the GPS. For ground, there are a number of chassis bolts that are good clean ground connection uh, immediately behind the clutch. Be careful not to leave any loose wires that may get hung up on the back side of the clutch. Anyways, that should be an, all you need to connect the wires up on a Skidoo Expedition LE. Thanks a lot for watching. Sorry that the installation video didn't quite turn out the way I had intended. And on to the next mess. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. For more great content from Doug's Messy Garage, click on one of the videos that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching.